Today we want to talk about petroleum economics, in particular understanding internal rate of return and net present value. These are two common economic parameters that we use frequently when we're evaluating oil and gas projects. So the first one is internal rate of return, which is IRR is the abbreviation. And the definition of that is just the interest rate at which the net present value of a project's cash flow equals zero. IRR is used to evaluate the attractiveness of a project or investment. For example, if you can borrow money at 6% interest to finance a project, you would want the project to have a greater than 6% IRR or you wouldn't make money on the project. So how do we calculate IRR? Well, here, here's the equation. It's a long equation. Uh, the P0, P1 are the different periods of cash flow. And you have to put in IRR here, which would be the IRR rate, internal rate of return of this project. So you, it's an iterative, iterative process because you have to put in different IRRs until the equation comes out to zero. So you have to use Excel, or you can use Excel to generate IRRs. But I use PhD Win economics software for my evaluations, and it calculates IRR and all the other economic parameters. So some of the pros and cons for IRR, it, it, it makes this technique makes it easy to rank projects by their overall rate of return rather than their net present value, and we'll talk about that later. But uh, you can rank projects. The higher the IRR, the better. But it only works for investments or projects where you have an initial outflow, cash outflow, like an investment, followed by one or more cash inflows. So, but this is perfect for drilling or workover projects because you're gonna invest the money to drill or repair the well, that's an outflow. And then it's gonna produce oil and gas and you're gonna generate cash from that. So that works great for oil and gas projects. But IRR does not measure the absolute size of the investment return. For instance, if you have a smaller project that has a high rate of return, but only makes a profit or a net present value of a, of a million dollars, versus a large project that might have a smaller rate of return, but it has a profit of $10 million. So you couldn't use IRR to pick the right project, maybe for this case. Also part of the definition is, IRR can't be used if the investment generates interim cash flows. And also you have to have an investment to calculate IRR. If you're just evaluating producing wells, you can do a cash flow and net present value, but if you don't have an investment, you can't calculate IRR. All right, so here's a typical drilling prospect evaluation. So we wanna evaluate this project. Here's a rate versus time graph with oil and gas here, gas is green, and we have the estimated or expected production from the well when we drill it. So we're gonna drill the well this year, late this year, it is $6 million, and then it's gonna IP or initial production in January 1st. So you put all this in your software and you add in the operating expenses, your ownership, your oil and gas prices, and you use the software to generate a cash flow or reserve report for this drilling prospect that you're trying to evaluate. So let's look at what the cash flow report looks like. Here it is. PhD Win calls it an economic projection report, but it's basically just an annual cash flow report for the project. And you have the oil and gas each year that you're projecting to produce based on your reserve graph that I showed you. And then you have to also put in your investment of $6 million here. And the program will take all this information and calculate an un, a non-discounted cash flow, just how much money you bring in each year. Here it is per year. But on the far right is the cumulative discounted cash flow. So that's based on uh, a 10% discount rate. That's just kind of a default rate we use to get started with. But for instance, this project, if you look at the cumulative discounted cash flow, it would have a value or net present value PV10 of one, about $1.6 million. So you get that. But we're trying to find the IRR right now. So IRR, if you look at this table of economic indicators, the IRR is 26%. So 
that's pretty good for a drilling well. And then the program will also generate these other parameters. But I want to call your attention to this table at the bottom. PhD Wind calls uh, it a pre present worth profile, but it's, we really call it a net present value. So anyway, here's the different discount rates and the net present value at that discount rate. So you can see as you go higher on the discount rate, the value of the project goes down. And when you get to about 25%, the product, right after you get past 25%, you're going to get into zero and negative value. So you, at about 26% is where you had zero value, and that's the definition of IRR. So here's your IRR is 26%. All right, so that's an evaluation of the drilling prospect. So we could compare this to other prospects that we have to see which one has a better rate of return. All right, what's net present value? Well, it's net present value, PV, NPV, present worth, PW. It's all the same terminology, interchangeable. But it, net present value is the value of the projected or future cash flows discounted to the present day. So we can use net present value to compare the profitability of different projects or investments. And the formula is down here at the bottom. You just take the cash flow of each period and you divide it by one plus the discount rate raised to the number of time periods. So you have to add up all the cash flows, sum them up. All right, so the net present value translates the amount of money you expect to make from a project or investment into today's dollars. It takes into account the time value of money or the interest rate. It's kind of like an interest rate. For example, if you have a project that's going to bring in $1 million per year for 20 years, that project is not worth $20 million today. The net present value would be less than $20 million, depending on what discount rate you uh, use. Because the money today, money 20 years from now is not worth the same as money today. All right, so I want to show you one uh, example of how you can use net present values when you're looking at an acquisition project. So what you have to first do is you have to evaluate all your reserve classes, calculate your reserves, uh, generate the cash flows like I showed you for the drilling location based on each well or each class and category of reserves. And then you will get that table at the bottom of each summary report, the net, net present value table, and you take all that data at the various discount rates and you throw it into Excel. And let me show you how that works. So here's an example of an Excel table. And so this is net present value as of 1120 in thousands of dollars for a project that has producing, non-producing, undeveloped, and probable and possible reserves. So here's the different discount rates at the top. So this would be like a PV5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40. So this is your discount rate. And uh, here's the discounted values for the, each of the reserve categories at the different discount rates. So it's a lot of, these are all do, uh, M dollars, thousands of dollars. And you can add them up just to see how it all totals up as a, at the bottom. But for instance, a PV10 is commonly used to value producing wells. So what that means is that it would be typical to offer to buy these wells for $377,000. That would be kind of the market price, maybe. And what that means is that if you bought the producing wells only for $377,000, you should get a 10% rate of return on your investment. But for the other categories, there have some risk, like the non-producing is a little more riskier. You would want to risk them a little bit because there's some uncertainty, so we might take the PV20 value. And then the proved undeveloped, we might go with a PV30, so that discounts it a little bit even further. The higher you discount it, the lower the value. So you could have the proved reserves here and the problem possible. So for the probable, you might use a PV40, and the possible, you're gonna risk it more at a PV50. So for example, we're saying the possible reserves are worth $243,000, but a PV10, which would be a typical, you know, for reserve estimates, is $741,000. So we're really risking the possible reserves. We don't wanna pay the full value because they have, they're, they're not proven. And so you have to know what boxes to pick 
based on experience and success and other acquisitions. And you have to understand the market because if you discount these values too heavily, you will bid too low and you won't get the project. So this is an easy way to document your bid and to pick a bid number. So if you add up the numbers in these red boxes, you get $1,738,000. So that would be based on this method, the recommended bid price or purchase price. So that's one way of understanding net present values and using them you know, to bid or risk you know, a bid. So uh, it's commonly done in acquisitions. All right, so please uh, let me know if this was helpful. I hope it was. If you have any questions, reach out to me on LinkedIn or call me and I'll be glad to help you if I can.